And today we're going to be going over some Microsoft Outlook hacks. And these are going to be some time-saving techniques to enhance your Outlook experience. So it's not really a how-to video today, more some tips and tricks to get you using Outlook in a new and different way. So without further ado, let's learn how to do just that. So to put it in perspective of how often we are using our email apps, we are sending and receiving around 306 billion emails per day this year in 2020. And we expect that number to go up to, to 347 billion emails in 2023. So email isn't going anywhere. We might as well make the most of our email apps. And also the average office worker is receiving around 120 emails every day. And 63% of us are using our mobile device to open that email. So we are using email on a lot of devices. We're getting a lot of emails. Let's figure out how we can maximize our app. The first thing I want to talk about, which I hope you're already doing, is accessing Outlook on a lot of different devices or on different platforms. So you can access your Outlook on your desktop app, which looks like this. Maybe most of you are familiar with this way. And another way that you can do it is through your browser, um, which is Outlook Web Access or OWA. And the last way is through your mobile device. And when you open it on your mobile device, you'll see that this is the default. It goes right into your focus inbox. But if you click on your avatar at the top screen there, you do get the full menu where you see your inbox, your sent messages, drafts, and all your other inbox folders. So you don't lose the functionality across the different devices that you access your email through Outlook on, which is great. We love it. So now we want to talk about exceeding email, something you do every day, but better. And let's talk about how you could do that. The first thing you could do is to use shortcuts and this will save time using some keyboard shortcuts. And these are super, super basic shortcuts that we put together for you. Um, very, very simple beginner basic level shortcuts. The first thing, one that I want to talk about is control R, which will reply to a currently open email. So when you get that email from Roger Rabbit with his famous carrot cake recipe, you can hit control R and you can thank him for that recipe. Super simple control R will reply to a currently open email. Control shift M will create a new email. And this is not to reply, but to create a a totally new email and no matter what tab you're in if you're in the calendar or in your contacts control shift m will create a new email for you then we have control one which will open your inbox your email tab then we have control two which will open your calendar and then control three which will open your contacts so again super super simple shortcuts and we do have a longer list of them if you would like that you can definitely email us at webinars at f8 consulting and we can get you that shortcut list another thing that you can do in outlook is delay delivery which is something and i personally love um, you can plan your communication ahead of time if you know that you want to follow up with someone on a certain date or maybe wish someone a happy birthday you can plan that communication ahead of time with delay delivery and the way that you do that is to compose an email and then you're going to go to the options tab and you're going to click on the delay delivery button. And when you click on that button, you'll get this dialog box and you're going to click the check mark next to do not deliver before. And that's where you want to put in the date and time that you would like that email to be sent. And then you're going to click close. And then after you click close, you want to go in, you want to fill in the recipient information and your subject, and then you want to click send. So then after you click send, that email will remain in your outbox, not in your sent folder, but in your outbox. And you can go into your outbox and you can edit that email until it is going to be sent out in between that time that you compose that email and you have it triggered to be sent. Uh, I just want to mention that Outlook must be open or running at the time your email is triggered to send out. If it is not, then it will not send. Um, so as long as it's really during business hours, we usually have Outlook open. So that's not too much of a problem. But if you are, you know, someone who travels a lot or is going on a business trip, you do want to make sure that Outlook is running for that email to be sent. So little caveat there, but not anything too serious. You can also talk it out with Dictate, which allows for talk to text emails to save time. And this is great. I'm gonna show you how to do it on your desktop here. Um, and to compose a talk to text or Dictate email, you're just going to click on the Dictate button there at the top. And then you'll select your language. There's quite a few languages that you can pick. So I hope yours is there. And then once you select that language, you'll see the record symbol appear, and then you're going to begin speaking to um, compose that email. You do wanna make sure that you're speaking slowly, 
clearly with minimal background noise to make sure that it's picking up everything that you're saying and that it's recording it correctly. And then when you're done, you're going to click dictate again to stop recording. Um, I do want to mention just one thing here, and that is that you do have to click through the different fields in order to dictate them, which kind of negates the whole talk to text is kind of hands free. But um, especially for the recipient information, we definitely want to type that in in case the recording doesn't understand you or maybe it's a long name. We definitely want to get that field correct. And then the subject line, just to type that in while you are, you know, already typing, you might as well just fill those two fields out. That's what I personally do. And then you can dictate the message. Um, super simple, really easy way to use dictate. You can also file your emails automatically, which is something really simple to do and easy to keep your inbox kind of clutter free. You can have your e incoming emails directed to a folder to just save time organizing your inbox. So something that happened to me, I subscribed to the New York Times and I was getting those emails into my focus inbox, which I really just wanted to use for work purposes. So I want to, those emails from the New York Times files into a news folder. So what I do is just right click on the email that you want to have automatically filed and you'll get the drop down menu. We'll zoom in on that for you. And then you're gonna click rules and under rules, you'll wanna click always move messages from, and in this case, it's the New York Times. And after that, you will then select which folder you want that, those uh, emails from that sender to be, uh, to be filed under which folder you'd like. And you can create a news folder so that way you can read all of your news. If you have a lot of subscriptions going on, you can just have them all go into your news folder and that way you can read them on your own time and you don't have to clog up your inbox, um, which I personally use for work um, with all kinds of other maybe junk email or email from news outlets, what have you. And then when you're done, you're going to click OK and then your emails will be filed automatically. How great is that? No more dragging and dropping. It'll just show up in that folder. Really great. Another thing that we use here at F8 is templates and signatures. So you can save time by creating a signature for an email that maybe you send out frequently. Um, if you know you find yourself sending the same kind of email out a lot, then you can just create a template and save it and send it quicker that way. So the way that we do that is by opening up a new email and going under signature, and then we'll click on signatures and we'll get this box. So we wanna create a new template and the name for this signature or template is a thank you email. That's something that I personally send a lot. Thank you for meeting with me. Thanks for getting on the phone with me today. So a thank you email is what we're going to create today. And then we're going to click okay. And here we have it, we create it. Um, it looks beautiful, something that I'm happy to send out. We'll click OK. When it comes time to use that template, we're going to go into signatures again and we'll click on our thank you template. And there it is, beautiful, ready to send. Uh, the only thing that I do want to mention here is that you can only have one signature per email. So if you do have a signature that you have set to um, that you that defaults on all of your emails, you can't have both. So what I suggest you do is just to copy your signature that you use and put it in the template at the bottom so that way your signature does still show up. Um, but you can only again have one signature in the email at a time, which isn't a problem. You can just put your signature in a template, not a big deal. And that's how you use a signature to have an email template. Something else that you can do is add color to your contacts so that when an important email comes in from an important person, it will stand out and you definitely won't miss it. And this is something really, really great. It's maybe a little more advanced to level two hack, but let's do it. You can do it. And this is how. So we're going to go into view settings and that's under the view tab in our um, Outlook app. Then we're going to go to conditional formatting. And under there, we're going to add a new rule. And this one is called Peter Parker. We definitely don't want to miss any emails from our beloved partner, um, Peter Parker. So we're going to make sure that his emails stand out. And so to do that, we're going to decide what they look by going into look like by going into font. And I want his emails to be red. I want them to be bold. I want them to be a little bit bigger. You can go 
kind of wild with how you customize these emails coming in. Um, if you think you'd get a kick out of seeing your boss's emails come in under Comic Sans, you can definitely change the font to that. Um, but I'm keeping it pretty simple here. We're just gonna have them come in red, bold, and a little bit bigger than the other emails. So we'll click OK. And then we're going to set the condition. So here, we're going to click Peter Parker, but you can add as many people as you want in here. So if you wanted to create a rule for marketing and have all of the people in marketing, their emails come up purple, what have you, you can have everybody in marketing under here and they will have a special um, look when they are in your inbox. But here, it's just for Peter Parker. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And now, whenever we get emails from Peter Parker, they're nice, big, red, in your face, you're not gonna miss them, um, which is a really, really great way to stay on top of important emails or projects. And you can turn them on or off um, by going into the same steps and just unchecking it next to the name, which is really, really great. Um, so great way to stay on top of important emails. The next thing that we wanna talk about is controlling your calendar. So you can stay on top of your meetings and reminders and Guys, we have some integrations with Teams and, and To Do. We did go over those apps in um, previous Lunch and Learn. So if you do want to check those out on our channel, you can definitely go into those videos and get a refresher on Teams and To Do. First thing that we want to go over is scheduling a Teams meeting. And you can create and join um, Teams meetings in Outlook, which is really, really a great integration and a great way to use both apps, which you really use for communication. And now you can use them to meet, which is awesome. So integration alert, a two-way thing, which is awesome. So let's see how we can do that. So when we are in Outlook and we're in our calendar, we see this add-on on the top. The new, we're gonna click on new Teams meeting. Um, and if you don't have that add-in, you're going to go into add-ins and you're just going to type it in there. If you need help with this, you can definitely reach out to us and we'll get someone to help you get this button on there. But you wanna click on new Teams meeting and then you're gonna fill in all of the information um, for that meeting. We have a marketing meeting coming up, so I'm going to fill in that information. And if you notice at the bottom there, you do have the link already in there. It's all set up. You don't have to copy and paste anything. It's already set up in there. So in the meeting invitation, it will um, include that link to the meeting in Teams. So we're going to send it off. And would you look at that? It shows up in our Outlook calendar. How great is that? And it also shows up in Teams. So very, very good stuff of great integration between the two apps. And you can join in either app with that link. Um, and I will show you in a moment how you can join it in Teams. So we're going to talk about going the other way. We're going to go from Teams to Outlook now. If you make a meeting, if you make a meeting in Teams, it will show up in your Outlook calendar. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So if you are creating an, um, a meeting in Teams, you're going to go to your calendar and you're going to click on the date that you want to have a meeting. And from there, you're going to fill out all the meeting information. It looks similar to an Outlook calendar invite, and it works pretty much the same way. They'll receive an email, um, and you will also receive an email when they RSVP, but you fill in this meeting information. We're gonna have a virtual birthday party for Jenny. We're gonna have everybody grab their favorite snack and join us from the comfort of their couch. And um, you see that that link is also here in, in Teams as well. So really great. Um, way to do it. They really didn't miss a beat Microsoft with this one. You don't have to copy and paste anything. It just creates the link for you in there. Really, really great stuff. Another thing that's great about making it in Teams is that you can track the RSVPs right in the calendar. So you just click on it and you see all the invitees who has accepted or declined the, in, uh, the invite. Really, really great. Um, so from there, we are going to click save. And there we have it. We have it right in our calendar. And to join it from Teams, it's very, very simple. You're just gonna right click on the meeting, zoom in on that for you. And you're going to click on join online. Super, super simple. You don't even have to go in and use the link. You can just right click it and join from there. And it appears in Outlook too. How amazing. Double click to open. Um, that meeting and there is that link once again. It looks exactly the same as how it did in Teams. We have all the meeting information, even the message shows up. Um, 
And we do see at the top that you can join the, the meeting from on top in that ribbon there, join the Teams meeting. So click that link, click that button, and you will join the meeting. Um, great integration um, on for these platforms as we're planning and communicating and meeting. We kind of use both apps for similar things. Um, so why not be able to join from either app? Really, really great. You can join from either app very, very simply and conveniently. Another thing that I want to talk about is flagging emails to set reminders so you can keep your team on track with reminders to follow up. Um, as you're sending an email, maybe you know you had a really great meeting and you want to follow up again next week and you want to make sure that everybody is reminded to follow up. Uh, you don't want to have to you know, be poking on everybody, sending everybody IMs. You just want it to happen and this is how you can do it. So from this email, you want to click on the red flag here and you'll get this drop down menu. So you can create a task here which is really, really great. Um, hint, hint, the integration with To-Do is coming. So these are your tasks. Um, and then you can also create a task and a reminder. So let's take a look at how you look at that because this is really some great stuff here. So you can first check this box, which is flag for me, which will set a reminder that will only go to you. Um, and you can set the date and time. But what's really great is that you can flag it for the recipients as well, which will set a follow-up reminder for them and it will alert them in a week as well. So everybody is really on the same page, getting the same reminders. And you don't have to worry about checking in any other way. You, They know from the email, it gives them a, a follow-up reminder. It doesn't get much simpler than that. But how do you actually see your tasks in Outlook we're gonna go over that right now because we have another integration learn, another two-way sync. Amazing. We're going to see how we can see our tasks in Outlook right now. Um, first, let's talk about a, for a second to do. I hope that this looks familiar to you. We see that we have our four tasks in to do. So where do they show up in Outlook exactly? How, if you wanna see them in Outlook, you just go to view and then you go to this to do bar button. And when you click on that, you'll get the drop down menu, uh, menu and you'll click on tasks. And then you get this beautiful task bar at the side here with all of your tasks that are in to do. And let's just um, take a closer look at that to add tasks to do from Outlook. Uh, we want, I wanna really, show you just how great this is. We're going to zoom in on our um, menu bar here. And we see that we have four tasks. Um, just like we did in our to-do before, we're going to create a new task. We are in Outlook and we remember that we wanted to create an email template. Um, so from right from Outlook, we don't have to leave the app. We're going to go into our task bar and type that in and press enter and look at that. It's added to our tasks for today. And guess what? It is now also in our to-do. So we can check it off in either place and it shows up no matter where you are, you're going to be reminded of your tasks. Um, very, very great stuff great way to stay on top of your tasks and make sure that you're getting everything done. And now we are moving on to mobile mail, which is going to help you to uh, keep up on the go. First thing that you that I'm going to cover is customizing your swipe actions and you can stay in, on top of your incoming mail while you're on the go. It's a great way to keep your inbox organized uh, right from your phone. So you don't have to worry about being on your desk to make sure that your um, inbox is staying organized. So what we wanna do is go to our inbox, we're gonna click on top there, and then we're gonna to go to settings, that little gear at the bottom of the screen. And then we will get the settings menu. And under mail, we want to tap on swipe options. And then you can customize your swipe right and swipe left functions. Really, really great. We see that mine are set to move and delete, but you can choose any other function that you'd like. You can archive, flag, move, um, read and archive. However you would like to customize your swipe functions, you can set the functions to whatever you'd like. Really great way to make sure that you are staying on top of your emails. Another thing is to get the alerts that you want and you really on your phone, especially really only want to get notifications for your most important emails, um, especially when you're on the go. You don't want to be bothered with all kinds of emails coming in, just the most important ones. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Again, we're going to go into settings by clicking on that top button there, your avatar, and then the settings button, the gear. 
were taken into settings once again and under mail again, you're going to go into notifications. And here is where you set the notifications uh, that you'd like to have. You can have it just from, you can have it from both your focus and your other boxes, uh, inboxes, you can have it just your inbox, you can set it to your favorite people, or you can turn off notifications and have none, which is a really great feature, especially to have in the summertime if you're on vacation, or maybe just on the weekend, you wanna get away and kind of shut down from work. You don't have to delete your email app, which I know some people may do, which is super inconvenient because then you have to re-download it. You can just turn your notifications off and maybe check in at your own leisure. You don't have to really have those notifications off getting 120 emails a day. You definitely don't want that on the weekend. So you can just have no notifications for the weekend. Just make sure that you turn them back on during the work week or when you get back from vacation. But this is a great way to make sure that you're only getting notifications for the emails that you want to see, your most important emails. And another fun thing that you can do is set a new sound for email and for sent mail. And this is just a way that you can customize it and really make your mobile mail your own. Um, just a fun little tip or trick that you can use for your mobile mail. Um, and that is Microsoft Outlook tips, tricks, your Outlook hacks. And Microsoft Outlook is a great place to communicate, connect, and plan. Bye-bye.